In our next lesson on lipid metabolism from Chapter 17, we want to do a brief overview of fatty acid synthesis and transport. The pathways of fatty acid catabolism and anabolism, that is degradation and synthesis, are actually spatially separate. It's accomplished in s separate compartments. Recall that beta oxidation takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria, but synthesis takes place in the cytosol. And it is keeping them spatially separate that allows us to regulate these opposing pathways, as we'll see in a later lesson. We also find that different cofactors are used. Recall that in beta oxidation, our ACL chain was attached to coenzyme A. We're also going to use coenzyme A in this process, but our growing ACL chain is going to be connected to ACL carrier protein. And a comparison of the two is at the top of the screen here. So here's coenzyme A. The adenine makes that the uh, coenzyme A molecule, and of course the business end of our molecule, as it were, is that sulfhydryl group. Here we have acyl carrier protein. It's attached to a serine side chain on the uh, enzyme that carries this group, but you'll notice that the groups present in the acyl carrier protein and coenzyme A are identical. This is panathenic acid or vitamin B, so they clearly serve the same function. We also find that there are different electron acceptors and donors in catabolism versus anabolism, as we would expect. In beta oxidation, we passed electrons to NAD plus and Q. That's a catabolic pathway. In fatty acid synthesis, NADPH is our electron donor because this is an anabolic pathway. They also differ in terms of the ATP requirements. Remember, it costs two ATP equivalents to activate our ACL group, but we only had to do that once, and the rest was sent through multiple rounds of beta oxidation. In fatty acid synthesis, it's going to cost one ATP for each acetyl unit we add to our growing chain. So our starting material for fatty acid synthesis is acetyl-CoA, and that's generated in the matrix of the mitochondria. And because synthesis takes place in the cytosol, we're going to have to move that acetyl group through some transporter back into the cytosol. And that's illustrated here. We looked at this briefly in an earlier lesson. We're going to transfer that acetyl group to oxaloacetate to form citrate. Note that this is the first step in the citric acid cycle taking place in the matrix, catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase. Now we can use our citrate transporter to move that into the cytosol. And in this case, we use a cytosolic enzyme, a lyase, that's going to transfer that acetyl group, highlighted here in red, from citrate to CoA. Note that we're forming a thioester bond and the energy to do so is going to come from ATP hydrolysis. So that's our cost just in terms of getting that acetyl group into the cytosol so that we can start to build our fatty acid chain. In our next video lesson, we'll look at, start to look at fatty acid synthesis, and we'll see it also involves a repetitive cycle, as we saw in beta oxidation, but that there is a limit to the chain length of the fatty acid that we can accomplish in this process, and we'll see what enzymes are required in this process.